If their image is a pain and damage, right, uh, and they're sort of overlaid with the sounds of pleasure. This is X-ray audio, a story of forbidden recordings from the Soviet Union. An exhibition brought to a troubled region where its message resonates today. By the 1950s, Stalin censors had banned entire genres of music. But listen carefully, and you could still hear the sound of decadence drifting over the Iron Curtain. It was a threat from the West, but an opportunity for dissidents and bootleggers in Russia. Underground, they copied smuggled music, not onto vinyl, but onto used hospital x-rays. People in Leningrad after the war uh, used a, a, a machine which you can make individual records with. Uh, they seem to have got hold of one of those and started to copy it, copy the technology, and build their own recording machines. Somebody somewhere along the line had found out that you could use x-ray film as a base to make records and they started to cut their own records for themselves at first and for their friends and then increasingly for sale it became an industry. Well that's the very first record that uh, I found in St. Petersburg five years ago. It's Rock Around the Clock, Bill Haley, so late 50s possibly early 60s had been made. Uh, and this is what started it all for us. It's obviously quite an intimate picture of some Soviet citizen. The bootleggers faced years in prison for doing this. When the KGB caught one and put him in jail, it wasn't just the bones they objected to. The press wrote that by spreading un-Soviet music, he had robbed the people of their souls. Around a million discs changed hands in the 50s and 60s, but only a minority featured American rock and roll. Russians wanted the forbidden sounds of their own. Gypsy romance, underground folk songs seen as anti-Soviet, or the music of emigres who'd fled the regime. It became known as Music on the Bone. A record might cost you a bottle of vodka. Dealers paid a higher price. Rudy Fuchs spent his youth cutting discs. He went to jail for it. It was uh, freedom, freedom in music. They don't like it. That's it. Russian-speaking Jews left the former Soviet Union for Israel in their hundreds of thousands. There is an understanding audience here. And X-ray audio was brought to Tel Aviv, say its curators, because culture wars, music as resistance, echo in Israel and the occupied territories and across the Middle East today. I spoke to Esra Al-Shafi from Bahrain. She doesn't want her face shown. Such can be the risks of pushing for free expression. Esra runs a digital equivalent of the old bone music, then it was forbidden folk songs in the Soviet Union. Now it can be Kurdish artists in Turkey who feel stripped of their indigenous identity. Mideast Tunes is a song-sharing platform in a region where she says censorship and surveillance are the norm. We have had artists for sure who have been arrested in places like Morocco and places like Turkey. We've had Kurdish artists who have been um, harassed, intimidated. Obviously, there are some times where a musician gets in touch with us and says, can you pause my profile? I don't want to delete it, but pause it for this period of time. Uh, for example, during the protest in Iran, whenever it really escalates. Here in the West Bank city of Ramallah, artists talk about a music industry that struggles to develop amid the politics of military occupation and a social conservatism that can shun their genres. This is Palestine Music Expo, an attempt to bring worldwide talent scouts to Palestinian artists from Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. 
Jawan Safadi faced police investigations both in Israel, who accused him of inciting violence with a song lyric. He was cleared after two years of inquiries. And in Jordan, where he was held after a concert and accused of insulting religion. There is a scene, there's a huge underground alternative scene in the Arab world, despite the restrictions, and there are restrictions and they are tough. There's many taboos that you can't sing about and you have to be very smart about it and to know how to do it and when to do it and where to do it. So, but you do it. Music seems to find its strongest voice with something to push against. One of the UK delegates here told me a vibrant underground music scene he found on his visits to Moscow simply faded away after communism collapsed. Even underground art ends up ossified. But the forbidden sounds keep finding new places to thrive. <laughs>